Hi everyone, uh, now this is, you've seen me tying these before, but normally I tie these wee, these Lego caddis for the, there's river patterns that I like, but this is one I use, uh, or tie for a, for the locks. Now this is a, it's basically called the uh, bright eyes because of the, the nylon I used, but it's just a, a, like a golden yellow and hot dark brown, or I could use a fiery brown version as well, but this is a, this is a good pattern, uh, it's a great colour combination, it especially works well in Ireland, uh, a friend of mine fished these and uh, caught a lot of fish in Ireland with them, uh, fishing in the evening, in the summer especially. So anyway I'm going to tie it up, now the first thing I'm going to do is swirl the hook, size 14 in this case, uh, I've used the light wire version, this is a heavy, this is a newer one so I'm going to be tying them on this uh, just a wee bit stronger, this is a check nymph, now it's obviously meant for check nymphs, but it's very good for a lot of other flies. And this is the heavy version, size 14. Now it's quite a, more of a 12-ish to me. I like it. They are quite big, some of these hooks nowadays. But the, you can size them, look at them. Now, the thread I'm using is a fiery brown. This one. Rusty brown, sorry. No fiery brown, but it's like a fiery brown. So I'm going to put some thread on. Come back up. Stop about a head length away from the eye. The eyes are a heavy. This is a. Now, I had some running line. You can, there's two two you could buy. There's a running line for a for a shooting head. You can get this heavy in Ireland. Uh, it's years ago, the, uh, but you can get the there's a sea angling nylon as well. It's very similar to this. And this is equivalent to thirty pound. Now to form the eyes. Now you don't have to put these on, but it, on, they do work, it works really well. So what I do is put it into a pointed pair of tweezers. You know, you only need a, the eyes on this are only maybe a small. So you're looking maybe just over a millimetre either side of the tweezers. So once you've got that, distance you're around about a mil or so for get your lighter. And just lightly, just heat it. Don't go right in. You burn it. Don't worry, burn it. It goes brown. So just lightly allow it to melt up against tweezers, just like that. It's not too bad. Let me see. Yeah, they're fine. Now, keep them in the tweezers. I'd best to just tie it in at this point. So two or three turns on one side, just to get it onto the hook. Then you want to place it on the top and then get it down to the, well obviously evenly either side of the, the shank. Just take your time. You to get it straight away, you'll need to mess about a wee bit. And once you're happy, you can tighten up. So just do like a figure eight. I'll show what it looks like. You can see how bright that is. Really good. It's great stuff. And then when I work to the back, I mean, then the way down I'm going to tie in a rib. Now the rib I'm going to be using is a clear. It's unimiler. It's called clear, but it's just a plastic, clear plastic. It's a medium. It's, I think it's the only one they actually they do. But anyway, it's a great rib. Catch that in the way down. All the way around this point here. Now for the body, I'm going to be using an, S an SLF dubbing. This one here is called Fiery Yellow. It's just, yeah, it's a lovely colour. It's a, a blend. Uh, looking at it, it's a, a nice warm yellow, golden yellow, and red blend. It's like sunburst in a way. So it's a great colour. Very good for caddis. So it's, Especially in the locks. Much like an Invictor yellow, that's what puts in mind though. So, anyway, just lightly dub this on. Make sure you've got enough on your thread so you can feed it and form the body. Now, what I'm going to do here, the easiest way to form the body, because I get lots of questions about this, uh, about actually getting a nice taper. The simplest way to do it is just to run it up. Much the same thickness all the way up. 
this case here in line with the pointer hook and then start to work your way back down come down about two thirds of the way and then come back up just watching how much dubbing you're putting in you want a nice caddis like body even if you've got to go back to get a wee bit heavier near the top caddis have got a real heavy body so don't be shy with it see what it's like now I do like a taper um, some like it more round it at the back but I do like a taper now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to colour the side that touches the hook with a permanent marker pen now Stedler, I haven't pronounced it anyway, this one uh, is one of the best, it's, it's, I've used this this marker I've had for years and it just keeps going now what I'm going to do is that, say the side that's going to touch the, the body just colour it and then wind it up and you see how great body you get to this point ideal caddish like body and you do see that in the caddis when they're hatching you can see it a mile away and the fish do recognise it, do react to it see what it's look like, now I'm going to just run the velcro through just to lift out some of the dubbing, just yeah. that. So it gives it very a wee bit extra movement, so it does. Now hackle, you can hackle I'm using here. If you can see this, I'm going to come out a wee bit so you can actually see this cape. Now this is a it's basically a an indie neck. Now it's basically a bad ginger. It's a ginger and white, and they have dyed it. See, it's yellow. It's basically, you can see it's a golden yellow vineyard dye, and it gives you this lovely colour. Ideal for uh, it's a golden olive white colour, perfect for caddis and for a lot of other flies. But it's a great feather to use as a hackle. So, I'm going to zoom back in now so you can see the fly. The length of the hackle, you're looking probably so it reaches the back. Just going to bear stem at the base just to carry the fluff. You can catch this in. Get my hackle pliers. You can wind it by hand, but. I'm going to use the hackle pliers so I keep my fingers out of the way. So basically what I do is I draw it through my fingers. Very simple, just to fold the hackle. So form a nice hackle, don't be shy with it. And even if you're spacing it out slightly, it allows the light to come through it. So we catch the tip in when we're happy, fold it back. And basically hide, we can hide all that with dubbing. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to roll these fibres. Roll them back. There we are. It's very glassy like this. You need a lot. The caddis is you'd be surprised how when they're hatching how much there's lots of stuff there. Now what I did was a uh, I dyed the golden yellow as well as you can see there. Uh, this is a cock pheasant tail to keep with the colour and then I've obviously knotted the legs. So I want three either side of the body just bring my fingers through, obviously counting them uh, there we are, fish don't count them but I mean I put six on and it looks the same every time so then I want as I say three either side of the body once you line them up tail them off, all you have to do is bring it 90 degrees from the tail just separate them so they're down either side. Now you could tie them directly underneath, but I like to see them on the side. And you want them longer than obviously the, the hackle fibres. So just basically come round with a couple of turns, tighten up. Just another one to make sure it's not going to move. There you go, so I'm happy with that. Take a thread up to the eye. You can fold this back, you can Tuck them back so they don't pull out, tidy up with, because I'm going to put some dubbing in here. There we are. And then it's just some dark brown. I'm going to use an SLF again. This is just a dark brown. 
uh, number in that is number 36 now these are old packets I've got, I've had these for years so it's easy to dub it's likely to dub it on now you can see I'm actually behind the eyes so I'm actually stretching the dubbing out, working up towards the, the hackle or back towards the hackle, whatever way you want to call it so. and then we just when we get to the back of the eyes again, coming through just take away the dubbing, but don't just leave it on your desk just stroke anything going forward just lock it all back using thread turn now I want to put uh, horns on this, so I'm just going to use some pheasant then we go, some pheasant tail, you could use pheasant tail but I'm going to use bronze mallard fibres, this is just some bronze mallard Obviously, two fibres. You want them um, slightly longer, you want them obviously level. Yeah, so we tie them front of the eyes. Oops, it's a pinching loop just to catch them. Now, what I've done here, as you can see, I've caught it uh, in front of the eyes, but the waist. What I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do but is bring the thread to the back of the eyes. So but separate the eyes as you come to the back. I'll show you what it looks like. So they, they separate like that. And then you can basically fold it back with a turn. And that basically locks it in. Now what I want to do here, just put a couple of turns more. Try to separate the other way up. Let's trim these out. Back to where we, we drop some more dub in here, just a tiny drop. This basically tidies the front up. You could just leave it the way it is, but what I want to do is just tidy this up just by figure eight with the dubbing through the eyes. Do a turn at the back, then figure eight through one uh, over towards your side, then to my side, stroking it back just come to the front, just stro keep stroking it back see how it's going to sit, that basically tidies things up and give it a more kind of slight look and then we want to quit finish I'm going to put some varnish on my thread and there we are trim away your thread that locks in it. See, you've got one, one, one fibre there caught. You see it underneath. No, the fish is not going to see it, but a pair of tweezers. And she's gone. Now, there we are. That's uh, the bright eyed caddis. Nice pattern, really is. Uh, certainly a fly you would uh, tie up. If you're going to be tying some, uh, th this is a great fly. I mean, it's rough, but. I mean, a little rough looking, but the, the profile, the shapes there, if you see this in the water, it's ideal. The legs, I mean, they do kick in. The horns make it, I mean, you, you, the horns are there, you do see them. Uh, the eyes brighten up. That's why, basically, they call it bright eye caddis, uh, because of the, the nylon. Uh, you can use the, as I say, I, I usually sit and make up these eyes. Uh, you can see them there. Um, so they've got the chartreuse version as well. Now, uh, as I say, you can tie it without the eyes. If you haven't got the eyes, just leave them out. Fly, or if you're going to use a fire on thread, give it a hot spot uh, rather than just using the nylon. So anyway, there we are. I hope you enjoyed that and give them a go. As I say, it's a, I tied it mainly for the locks, this version, but it was nothing to say it will not work in the rivers because it's a good colour. So. Again, thanks for watching, until next time.